In this video, we're going to look at how you can calculate total energy expenditure, how you can then map back to the macro composition that you see working best for you. And then for those who want to take it a little bit further, how you can periodize all of that uh, across the week. Just a quick caveat, uh, I'm, I'm not a nutrition uh, specialist by, by any account, so take this video more as a, as a concept of how you can use the spreadsheet to track the um, nutrition that you see working best for your, your clients. So firstly we're going to calculate basal metabolic rate which is the amount of energy you'd use if you was to stay in bed all day and we're going to use the Miffins and Jure calculation for that and this calculation requires that you enter gender, mass, height and age and if you do that only, again only changing the values in, in red will get the calculation for, for BMR which is written there. You then just need to multiply that by a weighting factor which represents the amount of physical activity that you do in a day. And here's some weighting factors here and some descriptors alongside that. So you've got, kind of got to take that with a bit of a, a pinch of salt in that it would take you two or three days to really nail down uh, the right energy intake for, for what you do. Then over here, once you've added that um, uh, weighting factor, you'll then get your total energy intake for the day. Some, some people will be trying to lose weight and some people will be trying to gain weight. You can use this next column here. If you're trying to lose weight, then you have to do that by losing a certain amount of calories each day. So you'll put how many calories you want, you want to lose per day and you have to use the minus sign for that. So if you want to lose 300 calories a day, you've got minus 300. I think typically you don't want to be aiming for any more than uh, 500. Um, and, but, but even then, people tend to um, overestimate how well they're, they're doing. So even if you put 500, you're more likely to be down towards 400 or the other side of that at least. This will then give you your total energy intake for the day. We can then use this. If you put your goal weight, in, and it's already going to look at how much you've decided to change by if indeed you have decided to change and it'll tell you how long it will take to get to your goal weight and that's quite nice because it gives a bit more of a realistic um, idea as to how long it will take you to get there and some people think that it will come a little bit quicker than it actually does. So here's your total energy expenditure and how long it will take to get there. You can then start to look at the composition of the macros um, that, that form that energy. And again, I'll just go with some of the typical standards and, and feel free to, to differ from that. But typically fat and protein are relatively constant. Some people prefer a diet that's higher in fat um, and some people prefer one that doesn't have as much fat and therefore has a bit more carbohydrate. So I've just gone for one gram of fat per kilo and then I'll follow the, some, some guidelines of two grams per kilo for uh, protein and we keep that constant. In the US it's normally two grams per pound so that might go up to 2.2. So we'll, we'll keep that fixed um, but of course you, you, you can change that based on your own preferences and, and what you understand to be the best way of moving forward. That will then give you your grams and how many calories and then typically then carbohydrate which is seen as the fuel to power the physical activity that you've decided you do or your athletes do each day then makes up the rest so of course the more physically active you are the more fuel required and the higher the carbohydrate composition you'll you'll get and you can see if i just change the weighting factor down to relatively sedentary you'll see the carbohydrate as a consequence will come down because you don't need so much fuel and again if I drop if I put that up to two because this was a flat out very highly intensive day then then you'll see that carbohydrate will go um, a lot higher now you can choose to average that out across the week i.e that's basically your week and you'll, you'll stick with that but for some people let's say if you're working if you're in football and your your athletes come in and they might have a low day medium day high day and might periodize in that order you might then want to periodize the the 
the energy intake for the week as well as the composition of the, the macros. And so you can change these numbers along here and it will, it will change. So again, we can make this actually all of a sudden it's quite a, a light day and it will change. And over here actually this turned out to be a, 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 a real tough one and it will change the composition as you go through. So here you'll get your composition of macros and your energy intake and in terms of tracking those with regards to the foods that you actually consume then apps like MyFitnessPal where you can take a snapshot of the uh, barcode are, are fantastic for that.